So if you were deciding on getting into AWS versus Azure, this video is for you. Welcome everybody. Welcome to Claydesk, your number one e-learning channel. We have full technology related courses just for you right here for free on YouTube, or you can go to claydesk.com and enroll in all of these courses for unlimited access. My name is Syed and I'm an IT enterprise architect. I've been in the field around, I've invited two experts. They're gonna be talking about AWS versus Azure. The advantages, some of the key factors, and of course, the salaries, how easy it is to use and so forth. I'm not gonna give everything away, right? So let's talk to these two experts. They'll explain or they'll let you know which platform is better so you can decide what is better for you in terms of your career path or if you're using any of these platform you can then let us know in comments so please subscribe if you're new to the channel or and of course hit the bell notification and of course hit the like button certainly appreciate that so without further ado let's meet our two experts an aws certified expert and an azure certified expert let's talk about aws compute first right so aws primary solution is EC2 instances, which provide scalable computing on demand and can be customized for different options. Also provides other related services like the EC2 container services, AWS Lambda, auto scaling, and Elastic Beanstalk for app deployment. AWS still offers the largest range of services, close to 100 or over 100 compute storage database analytics, networking, machine learning, mobile, and developer tools, management tools, IoT, security, enterprise applications, and you name it. So Azure Compute offerings are based on VMs or multiple uh, you know, VMs such as cloud services and resource manager that help deploy applications on the cloud. All right, AWS Storage. So AWS Storage is called Simple Storage or S3. So AWS's cloud object storage solution offers high availability and automatic replication across regions. So temporary storage in AWS starts functioning when an instance starts and stops and instance terminates also provides block storage that is similar to hard disk and can be attached to any EC2 instance or kept separate. All right, Azure Storage, let's talk about that. So Azure Storage mechanism is referred to as blob storage. Azure uses temporary storage also and page blobs for VM-based volumes. Azure Block Storage option is similar to S3 in AWS. So, hey, it's the same. The two classes of storage, by the way, by Azure, hot and cool. Cool storage is comparatively less pricey than the hot ones and not the one has to incur you know, additional costs. All right, AWS pricing. So we know that cost is a major, major factor, you know, for organizations that are planning to move to the cloud. So with increasing competition amongst cloud services providers, there has been a continuous downward trend on prices since quite some time now. Now, AWS offers free tier account with, of course, restricted usage limits that lets users try their services before they can buy it. AWS provides a pay-as-you-go model and charges per hour. AWS can also help you save more if you, you know, in, with increased usage. The more you use, the less you pay. And AWS instances can be purchased based on, you know, many, many models, for example. Some important ones are, you know, uh, for example, reserved instances, paying upfront costs. You can reserve an instance for one to three years. On-demand instances is the next one, right? so you use without paying any upfront cost. And spot instances is built for extra capacity based on availability. All right, Azure pricing. So Azure also offers free introductory tiers with restricted usage limits that lets users try and use their services. Also give you a couple hundred dollars worth of credit. Microsoft Azure offers short-term commitments to its users, allowing them to choose between prepaid or monthly charges. By the way, AWS is five times more expensive than Azure for Windows Server and SQL Server. All right, AWS databases, let's talk about those. So AWS works perfectly with NoSQL and relational databases, providing a mature cloud environment for big data. AWS 
you know, Core Analytics offers EMR, a Manage, Hadoop, Spark, and Presto Solutions, right? Help set up an EC2 cluster and provides integration with various AWS services. So Amazon's RDS, for example, supports six popular DB engines, MariaDB, Amazon Aurora, MySQL, Microsoft SQL, PostgreSQL, and Oracle. So Amazon DynamoDB, for example, is a fully managed serverless NoSQL database, right? Designed to run high performance applications at any scale. So DynamoDB offers built-in security, continuous backups, automated multi-region replication, in-memory caching, and data export tools. All right, your databases. So Microsoft SQL Server databases is highly available and durable and also provides automatic replication, by the way. Azure also supports both NoSQL and relational databases and as well as big data through Azure HD Insight and Azure Table. Azure provides analytical products through its exclusive Cortana intelligence suite that comes with Hadoop, Spark, Storm, and HBase. So Azure SQL Database Service, by the way, is solely based on MS SQL Server. Now Azure interface and tooling makes it easier to perform various DB operations, while AWS has more instance types which you can provision and get that additional control if you want, right? Yeah. All right, AWS salary, exciting part. So Amazon Web Services, you know, AWS has an average salary of a little over 106,000 US dollars, right? For example, across all jobs. So burning glass pegs, you know, AWS growth related jobs even more robust, by the way, hitting 45, about 45.6% in the next 10 years. So current median average salary for AWS related jobs is 104,000 plus dollars, which is fairly, fairly or pretty good, especially compared to the average tech salary of about $90,000. All right, Azure salary. So according to the same burning glass, right, which collects and analyzes millions of job posting from across the country, they projected, you know, Azure related growth expected to hit 38.4% over the next decade, which is a little lower than AWS. All right, right? let's talk about AWS difficulty level. So AWS is really, really easy to use. If you just dive into create a free AWS tier account, you'd find it fairly, fairly easy. But the really, you know, the important part here is that AWS has robust documentation. So if you go through certain, or if you want to be able to going through certain hands-on projects, there are many, many projects, for example, you can follow through in their documentation. Not only just that, but troubleshooting, debugging, or any other information that you need. They have an excellent source of documentation, white papers, and blog. So that's really the power of AWS in terms of, you know, its documentation and easiness, right? Or easy to use. And that's why we see the popularity of AWS growing more. All right, Azure difficulty level. I mean, come on. I mean, I know, we, we know that Azure has been around or Microsoft products majority of the people out there, right? In the technology world, they're comfortable with Microsoft products. AWS is just a new baby in town, I mean, or yeah, whatever, right? They call themselves a new sheriff in town, but hey, we call them a new baby in town. But in any case, Azure is, of course, a robust cloud platform, very powerful by Microsoft. And once you start to dive into Microsoft Azure, you will find it not only robust, and if you're comfortable with Microsoft products already, like if you work with Office 365 or Microsoft SharePoint, for example, it just becomes naturally to you to work with Azure. And since many of us are you know, Windows users, right? Pretty much Microsoft users, for the most part, it's a natural progression to using Microsoft Azure. And yes, Azure also has lots and lots of you know, documentation that it also uses. All right, welcome back. So, what do you think? I hope it made sense. If you like the video, please subscribe and of course hit the like button and the bell notification so you get notified every single time we come up with this kind of video so you can stay informed. So I hope you guys like the AWS analysis versus the Azure analysis and now you have better understanding as to which platform is better suited
for you. So if you're beginning your journey in the cloud computing, of course, AWS is highly, highly recommended. If you're a savvy Microsoft user, then we stick around with Microsoft Azure. So I hope this helps. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video with your colleagues, friends, and coworkers. My name is Syed, and again, I'll see you guys in the next video.